This lesson is called How to Add and Subtract with the Bar Model. Now using the bar model is going to be very important in algebra. It's a great way to picture an algebraic problem. So let's check out what it looks like. Write this down. So let's pretend that, mm, that Nick was running a race and his um, time for the first part of the race was 10 and 3 tenths seconds. His total time was 15 seconds. So how long did the second part of the race take him? So really what we can do is we can say, well, we could draw a bar that represents 10.3. And we know that the total was a little longer than that, 15 seconds total. So now we have this part that is unknown and we can mark it with a question mark. So that's how you would use the bar model. Now sometimes you'll see that the letter n is used to represent the variable for um, an unknown, and n just stands for number in that case. So let's solve for question mark, or let's solve for n. So really, this is an adding problem. It's 10.3 plus what equals 15? So if we were to write it out in a standard writing um, format, it would look like this. Write this down. 10 and 3 tenths plus n equals 15. Now, we can guess a whole lot at what n would be we could use the number line to work up to 15 from 10.3, or we can use the traditional algorithm where you put one number on top of the other. For a problem like this, I'd like you guys to get to the point where you can picture that number line in your head, and with some practice, get to the point where you don't have to do anything on paper to solve for n right here, where you just know what n is by doing kind of a number line with hop, 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 hop in your head. So here's what that might look like for a number line. So draw your number line. And we know that the total is 15. So our total goes over on the right side, the whole race. The time that it took for Nick to finish that whole race was 15 seconds. And we know that the first part of the race, everything up until this point over here, took Nick 10 and 3 tenths seconds. So now N is going to be the distance from one to another. So let's think about some hops. We could go team friendly hops or we could go team friendly jumps. I think I like to get rid of this decimal right here. So I'm going to go team, um, I think I said that wrong, team friendly hops or team, yeah, team friendly landing points. I want to go with team friendly landing points. So let's do some hops here. Let's hop to get the next whole number landing point. If I want to get to my next whole number, that's 11. So that's a hop of 7 tenths. Now to get from 11 to 15, that's a hop of 4. So my total answer would then be 4.7 because these are where our answers are in the adding on model. So we can circle those and say, okay, here's part of the answer and here's part of the answer. You put it together 
and it's four and seven tenths of a second. And that is what n is. So we can go back up to the bar model and we can write in right up there four and seven tenths seconds is the value of the question mark or the value of the missing part or the value of n. So the bar model is not a model for actually solving the problem. It's a model for setting up the problem and figuring out how to approach it. And then you can use any types of strategies for actually solving. Like the number line is a strategy that actually helps you find the right answer or putting one number on top is a strategy that helps you find the right answer too. But the bar model I love because it helps you decide if it's an adding problem or a subtracting problem. If you ever have a part that's unknown, but you know your total, and you know that you're going to be adding those things together, it's technically an adding problem, an algebra adding problem like this, but you can also solve it with subtraction. So let's use these same numbers to see how you would solve this the traditional way without the number line. So we have our mean minus 10.3. or 10 and 3 tenths. Now already some of you are thinking that is really ugly because it doesn't line up. So what can we do? We can add 0 tenths to 15 or we can place a 0 after the 15. And now we have just a traditional subtraction problem. And we're solving for n. We're solving for that missing part. I can't take 3 tenths away from 0 tenths so I need to regroup. I can make that four ones, and this can be thought of as 10 tenths. 10 tenths minus 3 tenths makes 7 tenths. 4 minus 0 is 4, and 1 minus 1 is nothing, and bring down, bring down, oh, bring down my decimal to me, to me. And then we have 4 and 7 tenths of a second which you will notice is the same final answer that we got using that number line. I think the number line though, if you can have a walking number line walking around with you in your brain, you're gonna be able to solve problems like this without actually setting up pencil and paper, one number on top of the other. Let's do another problem. This time we're using purple. Yay! Okay, so let's say that hmm, Kylie had three and a half brownies. And that's going to be part of a total here. So three and a half is the same as 3.5. And then let's say that someone felt so generous in our class and Maddie gave her four and nine tenths brownies. She ate a tenth before she gave it away. Who can blame her? They were so good. So that's another part and it's a little bit bigger than the three and a half. So when you draw your bars, I want to see that you can tell which one is greater and which one is less and kind of an estimate on by how much. So we have Kylie's brownies and then she joined up with Maddie's brownies. And this time, we know both of our parts, but we don't know the whole or the total. So we're joining these, but the result, the total, the end, is unknown. So that is what is going to get our question mark, or our n. So some number that they have all together. And when you hear a word like all together and you're at and they're asking you for the all together number, then it's asking for this right here and you need to put these two together in order to make this. That's an adding problem. So, in the traditional way of looking at an adding problem, it would look like this. 3.5 or 3 and 5 tenths plus 4.9 or four and nine tenths equals 
n. And when you have your total or your result that's unknown, that's going to be an adding problem. When I'm talking about adding and subtracting, that is. So if we were to do this on a number line, this is what it would, might look like. Set up your number line. So we can start with Kylie's three and a half brownies. And we're going to be moving toward this direction as we add more brownies to that amount. As we add Maddie's four, almost five, but with a bite taken out, <laughs> brownies, four and nine tenths brownies. So if we use the friendly landing points method of the number line, it might look like this. Let's add five tenths. Oop, I think I'm going to switch colors for that because no. No, I am going to keep it the same color because it's one of my parts that I know. It's one of my purples. Okay, so five-tenths would get me to a friendly landing point. Four. Great. Now, I know that I have to add four and nine-tenths total, so... I've added five tenths of it already. Maybe now is a good time to add the four. It's going to be a big jump. So four plus four gets me to eight. And what some students find really helpful is checking off the parts that they've already used. So that's why I checked that off right there. I've added my four. Can I check my nine off yet? No, because I've only added five tenths instead of nine tenths. So how many more tenths do I need to add? I need to add four tenths. Just a little hop. There, now it's in purple. And eight plus four tenths gets me to my result my final answer of eight and four tenths. So my mystery number up here is eight and four tenths brownies in all. And if I want to be meticulous about it, now I can check myself off for that nine tenths because it's right there. That's where the nine tenths is. And if we do this with the traditional algorithm of addition, we're going to have 3 and 5 tenths plus 4 and 9 tenths. We'll set that up and we'll get our final answer. See if you can beat the teacher right now. Go, 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 go. I could practically hear you all saying, dun, 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 through the computer screen. Task time. Write this problem down. If Kareth and Brian went out to lunch and spent a total of $23.59 at Zupa's, I love that place. If Brian's meal cost $12.39, then how much was Kareth's meal? So you are going to need to draw a bar model to represent this story problem, and then look back in your notes and decide which of the two problems that you did earlier is this most like. So is it going to be an adding problem, a subtracting problem, and how are you going to solve it? You can use number line or you can use the traditional algorithm, but the important thing is that you try, that you draw a bar model of what you think it'll be, and you try to solve and remember, we're trying to solve for a part that is unknown. Good luck. Share your answers at school.